Let's open our Bible to Psalm 23, verse um, 1 to 6. Psalm 23. We want to look at the word before we pray that says, The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd. Can we read together, church, one to go? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He make me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restore my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Verse 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou, my cup, run over. Verse 6. Surely goodness. <coughs> I shall dwell forever. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Uh, there is one word that filter in the beginning of that Bible passage, and the word is the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Who is a shepherd? A shepherd, literally, is a person who look after sheep, who look after flock of sheep. A shepherd keep together. A shepherd keep sheep together in a flock. Hallelujah. A shepherd overseas. A shepherd is someone who has a duty to tender sheep. And in the Bible passage where we read, David used the analog of sheep and their nature to describe his relationship with God. The Lord is my shepherd. And because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I pray for someone, because the Lord is your shepherd, you will not be wanting in the name of Jesus. Our relationship with God is not just father, son, or master, servant, but shepherd, sheep, relationship. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pasture. He lead me beside the still water. He restore my souls. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of the enemy, you anoint my head with oil, and my cup run over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the heart of the Lord forever and ever. That passage expressed a relationship. Hallelujah. It expressed the benefits of walking with God. When the Lord is your shepherd, when the Lord is overseeing your fear, when the Lord is in charge of your life, he takes care of you. As a shepherd, take care of you. Of his, of his flock. Hallelujah. I don't know, we live in Europe. Thank God that there are a lot to do with, um, with sheep. For those of us that hit lamp, I don't hit lamp. There are a lot of things to do. That, 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 I mean, the, the people that tend the sheep, they have a lot of things to do that we can ascribe as God in the role of a shepherd and we in, the, in, our, in our relationship with God. As a, as a sheep. God is the shepherd and we are the sheep. Hallelujah. God is the shepherd or God is our shepherd and we are a sheep. And the Bible passage where we read, we see the role of a God as a, as a good shepherd. A good shepherd meets the sheep's need. Hallelujah. If you are a true shepherd, you will not allow your sheep to starve. You will not allow your sheep to go hunger. A good shepherd will direct the sheep to where they can find food. The sheep have needs that the shepherd is always willing to meet. The sheep has a need for food. They have a need for water. They have a need for rest. They have a need for safety and direction. If 
there is no direction for sheep, they will scatter. Hallelujah. So if you are a child of God and you don't have divine direction, your life will not be meaningful. To a good shepherd, there is no greater reward, no deeper satisfaction than seeing that the sheep are happy, than seeing that the sheep are contented, than seeing that the sheep are in shape, that they are well fed, they are, they are safe, and they are flourishing. Hallelujah. And that is what their life is all about. Hallelujah. The life of a shepherd is about the sheep. Everything that God is about is about me and you. Hallelujah. Everything about God is about me and you. And a shepherd is someone that has a greater role to keep the sheep safe. David was a shepherd himself. Hallelujah. And he could draw similarities between what he was doing for his sheep and what God was doing in his life. He could draw a distinction. He could draw similarities. He could draw, he could make inference. He could see how God kept him from Saul. He could see how God lifted him from unknown to become known. He could see when he was nobody, God prepared him. And God was able to hide him until his time. As God is doing for someone in, in the house. God is preparing you. God is hiding you from the enemy until your time for fulfillment. David understood every details about what you could do to keep a sheep safe or to keep sheep safe. And he, he was able to see the flow of the faithfulness of God in his life. Hallelujah. The term shepherd qualify our relationship with God. What God has for us. In Psalm 23 verse 1, God is our shepherd. And because he's our shepherd, he performs certain responsibilities. He discharges some things towards us. As we can see in verse 1, God is our provider. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I pray for someone as this year is coming to an end, any era of poverty in your life and lack, terminate in the name of Jesus. Amen. What we have with God, I'll share with God, we want us to trust him as our sole provider. When he's a shepherd, he provides. A shepherd provides for the sheep. A shepherd will travel length and breadth to ensure the sheep are well cared for. And that's what it does for us. God is the source of everything that we need. And as our shepherd, he cares about what we care for. The Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He has the key. He has the control. He's able to nurture. He's able to navigate to wherever you will be cared for. Hallelujah. And I pray for someone again, as from today, God will take you off in the name of Jesus. God is your source for everything you need. He cares about everything you care about. God is your source. God is your source about everything. Say neighbor. God is your source about everything. Sorry, God is your source for everything you need. God is your source for everything you need. And there is nothing too big that God cannot provide for you. I don't see anything too big that I cannot provide. Because he's the greatest provider. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He can provide anything. He can provide anything. I, in history, I've had a lot of ones that I put into his hands. And he proved himself by providing. He made timely, I mean, time, timely provision. He ensured timely provision in such a way that a shepherd will ensure timely provision for his sheep. God is your source for everything you need. Stop looking unto men. Trust him as a shepherd, will, as a sheep will trust their shepherd. Brethren, there is no need, no matter how small, that God does not know about it. And now, no matter how big they are, that he cannot provide for us. The Bible says in Philippians 4.19, and God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory. If God choose you and bought you and redeemed you and bring you thus far, he's able to 
supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, I shall not want. David said, I have been, I have been young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous. Hallelujah. I have never seen his righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. If you are a child of God and you, and you key into him, as your, as your shepherd, he's able to provide. He's able to provide. The Bible says in Hebrew, Hebrew 13, 20. Hebrew 13, 20. Now may God of peace who brought you again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. The great shepherd of the sheep. That's the key word I'm looking for there. The great shepherd. The, the great shepherd. By the blood of the eternal covenant, the great shepherd. The great shepherd of the sheep is able to meet your needs. He's able to. He's able to. And I want to trust him that as you are going to the new year, your needs spiritually, physically, emotionally, careerly, materially, maritally, will be met in the name of Jesus. What can we deduce from verse 2? As our shepherd, God become our habitation of peace and rest. David said, he makes me to lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me beside the still waters. A shepherd leads. And what is the vision behind the leading or guidance? It's because they are looking for green pasture. They are always looking for a place where the sheep can rest. A shepherd guide their sheep to a place of rest. I pray as you are marching forward, may he guide you to a place of peace and rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 verse 3, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stay on you because he trusts in you. Because he trusts in you. Because he trusts in you. Brethren, as you trust him, as a sheep trusts their shepherd, he is able to lead you. He is able to take you through that journey. He is able to, he's able to buffer you in that difficulty. He is able to defend you where you appear to be defense, defenseless. He is able to lift you up when you think you are down. He is able to give you voice when you don't have a voice or when it appears you don't have a voice. That's the kind of God that we serve. Brethren, in Hebrew, pasture means dwelling or habitation. And they are applying in verse 2, Psalm 23, verse 2, as a place where sheep lies down to relax. A place where sheep lies down. A place of relaxation. The Bible says in Psalm 4, verse 8, In peace I will lie down both. I will lie down and sleep. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Hallelujah. And as you are going forward, you will dwell in safety in the name of Jesus. You will dwell in safety in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 11, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence there is what? Fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there is what? There is what? There are pleasure forevermore. He's a great shepherd. He's a great shepherd. There is fullness on one hand. And there is pleasure on the other hand. And when you are a child of God that are faithful to him in all areas, you are exposed to everything that he has. He withholds nothing from you. He withholds nothing. He gives you everything. He gives you everything. When you trust him, he gives you everything. He rises for you. Even when nobody rises for you, he defends you. Even when you are defenseless. I pray again that this year is your year in the name of Jesus. Amen. What can we deduce from verse 3? As our shepherd, God is our restorer and redeemer. He restores my souls. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Sheep has to be led. I've never seen a sheep that does not need a leading. Any sheep that is grown to will be astray. Sheep have natural tendency to want to wander off and get lost. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 6, it says, we, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned down his own way. Brethren, when we go astray, we are in danger of getting lost. We are in, we are in danger of being attacked by the enemy. 
We can even draw or fall off. But when we listen to him, when we hear him, he's able to guide us. He's able to help us to navigate. He's able to restore us and bring us back into the fold. He's able to put us back in the path of righteousness. Nothing but for his name's sake. God is passionate about souls. And he will do anything. He will do anything to track down sheep. The Bible says in Luke 53, Luke 53, from the NLT, Luke 53, 3 to 7, Luke 15, 3 to 7, from the NLT. So Jesus told them this story, if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them get lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? Verse 5. And when he has found it, <clears throat> he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who will repent and return to God than over 99 others who are righteous and have to stay away. God is passionate about your souls. God is passionate. He's a God of second chance. He's a God of even third chance. He gives people chance to redeem themselves. He craves for our repentance. He craves that we remain in him. He wants you to finish well. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He's a deliverer. He's a restorer. Any sheep that wander off, he has the capability to bring them back. And I pray for anyone under my voice who has wandered off. The Lord will bring you back in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bring you back in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bring you back in the name of Jesus. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things new. And in verse 19, the Bible says God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people sins against them. And he has committed to us. The message of reconciliation. One thing about, about, about shepherd is reconciling. Always reconciling. Are you guys with me? Always reconciling. What can we deduce from verse 4? As a shepherd, God is our main protection. I'm going to dwell on this one a bit. God is our main protection. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. A shepherd is willing to give everything. A shepherd is ready to pay with his life to protect the safety and well-being of the sheep. A shepherd will do anything, even to death, for the sheep to live. A shepherd craves for the safety. And that is what God does by sending his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not what? Perish, but have everlasting life. When God calls you as a shepherd, you have to do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Not all shepherds are good. Not all shepherds are good. The Bible told us in John chapter 5, no, John 10, 1 to 5. John 10, 1 to 5. Jesus gave a brilliant analog of a good shepherd. By drawing a distinction between the real shepherd and the fake shepherd. In verse 1, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who speak over the wall from the NLT. Anyone who speak over the wall of a sheepfold. Rather than going through the gates, must surely be a thief and a, and a robber. And you agree with me that we have a lot of shepherds in the world today. We will rather bypass protocol, divine protocol. Hallelujah. Because they have their own motive. To attack the sheep. Verse 2. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. And he call his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has guarded his own flock, he walks ahead of them. And they follow him because they know his voice. And they won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. It draws a distinction between a good shepherd, between a real shepherd and a fake shepherd. There are so many counterfeit shepherds. 
there are so many fake shepherds. And the Bible told us in Ezekiel 34, verse 1 to 5, God commanded Ezekiel to prophesy again bad shepherd because they neglect the needs of the sheep under them. The Bible says in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 34, from verse 1, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherd. The shepherd from the NIV. NIV. Shepherds of Israel, saying to them, Thus says the Lord to the shepherd, Woe to the shepherd of Israel who, fe who feed themselves. Should not the shepherd feed the flocks? Verse 3. You hid the fat and clothed yourself with the wool. You slaughter the fatling, but you do not feed the flock. Verse 4. The weak you have not strengthened, nor have you healed those who are sick, nor bound up the broken, nor brought back what was driven away, nor sold what was lost, but with force and cruelty you have ruled them. So they were scattered, they were, there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. Now the point that God wants to draw is to forewarn us against the danger of following bad shepherd that appear like a good shepherd. So if you are looking for extra, apart from the word of God, you will fall into the hands of bad shepherd. And what will they do? They will be the one to feed and you will be the one to lack. They will be the one, in fact, and they will be clothing and people will be walking nakedly. They will be the one strengthening and the sheep will be weakening. They will expose the sheep while they cover themselves. Why they pray themselves? And we have a lot of people like that who are supposed to do a good job in their role as a shepherd. But unfortunately, it's all about them. I pray for every member of this church and those who are under my voice. Any influence of bad shepherd upon your life is broken in the name of Jesus. A good shepherd attunes to the sheep's safety and well-being. You don't leave them to die. You do everything in your power to support them. You try and lift them up. You form part of their journey. You can't go on a journey on your own, a difficult journey, and say you, are, you have a shepherd. You don't have a shepherd. If you're on a life journey and you're on your own, check yourself. Who is shepherding you? Your shepherd should be there to guide you, to bear the body, to pray with you, to lift up your hand. And that's what God will do for any one of his child. God will never neglect his child and see them wander off. He's a, he's a great shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible told us about Samuel. In 1 Samuel 17, 34, 35, 36, David attuned to the sheep's safety and well-being. David defended the sheep from a lion and a bear. David said to Saul, your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion on a bear and a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, my Sapta Kalima, 35, David said, I went after it. I struck it and rescued the sheep from his mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by the ear, struck it and killed it. Verse 36, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. And he likened Goliath as uncircumcised. Hallelujah. A shepherd must be someone that stands tall. When the sheep are under attack, like David, God is passionate about the safety of his children. He's preparing to defend you against your enemy. Who is your shepherd? Whoever shepherd you determines where you land. Whoever shepherd you determines the voice you hear. Whoever shepherd you determines what you do in life and what you achieve in life. God is passionate about the safety of his children. Brethren, if God is your shepherd and there is a warfare, that warfare will disappear. Amen. If God is your shepherd and there are issues, as long as you have God behind you, the, 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 the warfare cannot consume you. Amen. The Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God, those whom he has chosen according to his purpose. When you have him as your shepherd, I have never seen that situation. I have never seen that problem. I have never seen that man, that woman, born of a woman that can, that can undermine you. Who is he that sees it? 
Hallelujah. When God is the one fighting your battle, your enemy is finished. But when you are the one fighting your battle, you will struggle. Because you cannot fight the battle. Sometimes, as the man of God last week, the battle you don't know anything about. Some battles are there for God to fight. Some battles are not your battle. All you have to do is to hand over there to him who can fight them. You need a shepherd who is passionate about your safety and your well-being. Brethren, God is preparing to defend you against your enemy. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, 49, 25, Isaiah 49, 25 from the KGV, but thus says the Lord, even the captive of the might shall be taken away, and this prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contend with thee, and I will save thy children. When you have him as a shepherd, as David did, he will contend with your lion. He will contend with your bear. He will contend with your forces. He will contend with your enemy that said you will not progress in life. That's what we do. David did not take it easy. That was what a shepherd do. They don't take it easy. When they see a threat, they have the ability to read ahead. And they get into it. And they move and clear the threats. Brethren, we have a great shepherd that can, that can determine the threat and destroy the threat. And that's God Almighty. He said in Psalm 91 verse 1, he would dwell, take a piece of the, of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, is my what? My refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from what? The noisy pestilence. That's the God we serve. The God who is mighty in battle. The great shepherd. The one that when a threat comes, is able, to, is able to, 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 to handle the threat. He can handle the enemy, no matter who they are. Even when they are familiar, he can handle them. He can handle your enemy. A shepherd handles the enemy. A shepherd stands against threat. A shepherd stands against any attack that undermines the safety of the sheep. And I pray that this year, the Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will fight for you in the name of Jesus. He will fight for you in the name of Jesus. When you have him as your shepherd, he will do what no man cannot do. All you have to do all I want to imagine to do this morning is to trust him as your shepherd. And if you don't know him as your shepherd, you have the opportunity. I want to introduce you to a great shepherd. The one that created the heaven and the earth. The one that sent his son so that me and you can be saved. So that we can have life. The one that called us and brought us to being. The one who is able, abundantly able. The one that can do what no man cannot do. The great warrior. I want to invite you to him this morning. I want to, to tell him and hand over your life to him. And this morning, he will answer you in the name of Jesus. Let's rise.